Morning, everybody. Carl Blackstone with the Columbia Chamber. We're delighted to have you uh, join us today for this week's webinar. Um, thrilled to have my friend John Barnes uh, join us. John is a principal owner of uh, one, one of the principal owners of, of Pendleton Street Advisors and, and a good friend of mine, but he is a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I'm going to let him talk a little bit about Pendleton, but uh, they are very, very good at what they do in, in helping businesses grow and develop and have a strategic plan. Think of it like a financial planner for businesses. And um, he's a, a thought leader in this community. Uh, just recently, or last year, got elected to uh, Forest Acres Town Council. Uh, but John's been engaged in Columbia for a long time. Little piece of trivia, met John literally a little over six years ago. I just started the chamber. and. He and I were born in the same hospital in East North Carolina. I've never met anybody else outside of my hometown that was born in the same place I was. So um, John, John and I uh, go back a ways and, and thrilled that he's here. So thank you for taking the time to be with us. Uh, just for housekeeping, there's a chat box. Everybody knows this, but uh, feel free to, uh, if you have questions for John, um, feel free to put that in the chat box or info at columbiachamber.com info at columbiachamber.com if you are on the phone and, and, and can't uh, enter the chat box. So, John, I'm going to flip it over to you, but thanks so much for, for being here. Sure. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for the chamber for um, hosting these things. I, I think what you'll um, hopefully see in, in the presentation uh, that, I, that I do today, that, that the chamber is actually incorporating a lot of these things that I'm going to be uh, sharing with you today. Um, and they're doing a great job of uh, leading through this time. Uh, let me go ahead and I want to share my screen. Um, let's see. Uh, we can get into the slides and we'll kind of get into the, uh, the issue at hand here. Um, so th this is, uh, you know, the title of this is, is preparing your business for the next normal. Um, I've, I've sort of grown a little tired of people talking about the new normal. I feel like that got worn out um, in the 2008, 2009 crisis. Um, and I think in that, in that recession, we did have a lot of new things going on. Um, but the reason I differentiate between new and next is if you think about even, even in, um, as, as a person, when you, when you grow up, you go through things, you learn lessons, uh, you don't forget those things. You, you carry those with you into the next stage of life. In business, you carry those into the next stage of your business, uh, the next stage of the economy. And so um, if, if I was able to sort of single-handedly uh, change our vocabulary on this, uh, I'd love to do it so that we start talking about uh, what the, the next normal is going to be. Um, so let me start by sharing this with you. Um, just, you see just a line graph here. Um, the Wall Street Journal and an organization called Vistage International, uh, they're sort of a peer advisory group for small business owners. I am not a member of this, uh, of this group. Um, this is not a commercial for Vistage, but they put out a monthly survey of small business CEOs. Um, and you'll see here, uh, they've been running this survey since 2012. February of 2020 was the highest ever recorded level of uh, CEO confidence uh, among small businesses. Um, 816 businesses were surveyed in this. 50% um, of the respondents uh, were businesses with less than 50 employees. So again, a kind of a classic uh, Chamber of Commerce member uh, in terms of the smaller business community. We do have larger businesses represented uh, within the Columbia Chamber, but this is a survey of people sort of just like us uh, that are participating here. You'll notice that from uh, February to April, uh, it only took two months uh, to reach an all-time low of 44.7. But the good news here, and this report was released just last week, um, is that we've gone up a bit in, in uh, confidence, um, CEO confidence. And I just wanted to share that with the group to start this out, just to say that, hey, you know, we are starting to see a little bit of a bounce in, in how people are feeling and what's going on somewhere with the reopens. Uh, I'm gonna share a few more data points from this survey, and then we're gonna have kind of part two of this, which is gonna go into um, value creation in businesses. And I think how specifically uh, businesses can, can um, benefit from thinking about this next normal. Uh, simple question here, you know, during the next 12 months, do you expect economic conditions? Um, half of the people thought they'd be better and about half of the people thought they'd be worse. Uh, kind of a, a dead even tie there. Um, 
when asked about uh, their firm's sales revenue, 42% uh, thought that they would, their sales revenue would decrease over the next 12 months. But I think it's interesting, and this is where you can have fun with statistics here, if you take the increased number at 33% and the remain the same at 23%, add those together, 56% of respondents uh, think they're either going to stay the same or increase over the next 12 months. And so I don't think we need to, to lose sight of that. In terms of profitability, again, 44% think that profitability will decrease over the next 12 months. But again, if you take that improve and you add the remain the same, uh, that's about 54% uh, think that their profitability will get better. Uh, that, that's a good thing. Um, sentiment is a very powerful thing in terms of business. In other words, we don't like to talk about feelings a lot. We like to talk about measurables. We like to talk about hard data. Sentiment is very hard to measure, but it is unmistakable uh, in terms of its impact on the business community. Uh, this is about employment. Uh, do you expect your firm's total number of employees? Uh, again, a little less than half thought they'd remain the same. Uh, second place there, decrease, uh, increase, and then about a quarter thought they would, they would decrease. Uh, sort of some interesting stats there. Um, this is something I think that may be of interest to a lot of people that are listening here uh, about what programs have you or do you plan to leverage for your business. Now, respondents were allowed to pick more than one, and so that's why you'll notice that these percentages are not going to add up perfectly to 100, but 90% of the 816 businesses surveyed took advantage of the Paycheck Protection Program. That's a huge number. Uh, the next largest uh, group uh, took advantage of bank lines of credit. Um, in, our, in our firm, uh, we saw every one of our uh, clients, uh, so 100% uh, applied for PPP and 100% also were drawing on lines of credit um, over the past uh, couple of months just to kind of weather uh, the, the decrease in revenue uh, and, and some of the economic uncertainty. Um, and this is a question specifically about COVID-19, about the degree to which your revenues have been impacted. Uh, the, the number one response at 30% of respondents said that that revenue had decreased between 10 to 24%. Uh, and then the next uh, largest group was between 25 and 49. So about half of the businesses that have been surveyed have seen a decrease in, in revenue during this time of between 10 and 49%. Again, those are some pretty significant uh, numbers. I did think it was interesting that on the no change group was at eight and the increased was at seven. Um, you've got about 15% of businesses um, that, you know, there was really no impact to maybe a positive impact. And again, um, in the marvels of capitalism, uh, one person's crisis uh, could be another person's um, uh, boom time. Uh, and I think, again, we see that play out here. Um, expectations on economic conditions in the U.S. Uh, a third think they're going to get better within the next year. Uh, light, less than a third think they'll get better even faster than that. I think this is, you know, one of these things where time will tell. But this is what business owners that were surveyed were thinking as of the end of May. So this data is pretty fresh um, in, terms of, in terms of what they're, what they're thinking. Um, and the last one of these that I'll share with you, I know sometimes statistics can be a bit boring, um, but you know, when, when asked to describe where they expect their own business to be uh, six months from now, so basically at the end of this year, 49% uh, thought that they would be moderately weakened, but beginning to regain momentum. And then a quarter or a little bit less than a quarter. So they're going to be stronger than before. You know, you add those two up, that's 74%. Three out of four business owners um, who responded to this think that things are generally going to get better um, in, in the next six months. And again, sentiment is very, very powerful uh, for our economy. Uh, again, difficult to measure, and that's why it's good to have surveys like this. Um, I will provide a link to the chamber as to where you can find uh, the survey information. It's not just for members of a Vistage group. Um, this is stuff that, that's made, that's kind of put out there in the public domain, um, and it's just kind of a good um, sort of a thermometer, if you will, just to check every now and again to see what uh, businesses are thinking and say. But let's get to uh, probably why you're here, hopefully why you're here. Uh, and that's to talk about preparing for the next normal. Um, I think one of the things that, that, that businesses can do um, in almost any circumstance, but certainly in a time like this, um, is to frankly ask better questions 
of themselves. Um, we, we learn by asking questions. Very, uh, in other words, our own curiosity, as we feed our own curiosity, that's really how we learn. We have information flying at us from all over the place, from any number of directions, social media, traditional media, um, industry reports, uh, industry gossip, all kinds of things. But I think a lot of times, um, sort of the old way, if you will, was asking if the economy takes a serious turn or a serious downturn, how will it affect my business? I think we've all, all asked ourselves that. I know I've asked that of, of our firm. Um, those of you on, online have probably asked the same thing. But what if we change just one word in that question to make it look like this? If the economy takes a serious turn, or maybe we could even change that if to when the economy takes a serious turn, how will it affect my customers? I think in this next normal, I think there's going to be even an even greater focus on customers. Because if you think about what took us into um, this uh, down economy, it was, it was a biological issue. Again, every human being on the planet in some way, shape, or form was impacted by this. Well, all of those people are customers or clients of a business. And I think as business owners, we can tend to think a little bit too inwardly, a little bit maybe, dare I say, too selfishly about what's going to happen to us, if you will, in our business. I think one of the biggest ways that we can get ready for the next normal is to think about how is this going to impact my customers? I think, uh, and so let me, let me get into this in terms of a couple of categories that I think we need to be thinking about. In this next normal that we are uh, entering into, um, I think we've seen some pretty huge customer behavior shifts. Um, the whole issue of distancing, uh, the contact-free economy, um, sort of at home for more time, uh, sort of office optional. Uh, our own firm uh, has, has basically gone into a, a, virt a remote uh, work conditions. Um, some of that was brought on by the quarantine, but now that that has been lifted, uh, we've decided to, to stay in a, in, a, in a remote optional environment. I never would have chosen to do that um, as, a, as a business owner uh, because I didn't really see how it would quote unquote work for us. Uh, but when you have to make something work, uh, you figure out a way to do that. And I've been really proud of our team uh, for how they've handled this. But you, I think as business owners, we've got to understand that our, our customers and clients, whether you deliver a service, whether you deliver a product, whether you serve food, uh, no matter what you're doing, your customer's behavior is shifting. Um, you know, I, I tweeted this um, about a month ago, but I, I made the comment and sort of maybe, maybe a little... Uh, dramatic, but it's about nostalgia um, kills. Um, if you are sitting there as a business owner, wishing, hoping, uh, maybe even praying that things return to quote unquote normal, um, I think you're going to get left behind in this. Um, we will learn how to live with COVID-19, um, but we are not going to go back to the way that the world was, say, in January of 2020. Um, that, those ships have, have sailed um, and, and sailed quite convincingly, as evidenced by just these four behaviors, uh, to say that there aren't more that are changing. I think another thing that is, that is going to impact customers um, are, are various government interventions. Uh, I'm not making a political statement here uh, whatsoever, but this is just a fact. Uh, when you have the level of closures uh, that we had that were mandated by different government entities, whether it's stay at home, shelter in place, whatever, uh, the jurisdiction you live in was calling it um, when you have the targeted financial tools uh, that the federal government, state government, even local governments, uh, things like City of Columbia, their grant programs and things like that, um, changes in laws, as well as the, the sort of the issue of local, state and federal coordination of these kind of things. This is going to impact how your customers behave. Um, not only how they do business, but how, in other words, and how they purchase goods and services, but they also expect that the providers of those goods and services uh, fall in step. Um, if any of you have, have gotten takeout food in the last two months, um, you've probably seen where there are some places that you think are doing it well in terms of the food quality, but also doing it well in terms of helping to keep you safe. Um, as a customer in your interaction with them, uh, lack of touch, 
making it ability to pay, paying in advance through a website, uh, as well as keeping their own employees safe so that they can actually have a business um, to, to run. Um, all of these behavior changes need to be studied, they need to be accepted, uh, and they need to be planned for and incorporated in terms of how we are thinking about running our businesses in, during this next normal. So let's get into some nuts and bolts here uh, in terms of, of how, you, how you really begin to prepare for this, because I think a lot of us have seen these customer changes. Uh, we're experiencing them. We're trying to incorporate them into what we're doing. But is how do you really create value? Uh, in other words, monetary value, financial value in your business. In other words, your business might be worth $5 one day. How do you get it to be worth $7 or $10 or $100? Well, I think prior to this, there was a big emphasis on, and I'll call it again, the old way is efficient and consistent positive cash flow. Um, not saying that you had to have huge amounts of positive cash flow, but to the extent that your business consistently year in, year out, quarter in, quarter out, made, uh, created positive cash flow. I think in the new way, in sort of this next way, if you will, we need to incorporate all that. So again, we're not forgetting about general business principles. We're not going to a new normal where that stuff doesn't make sense anymore. I think that stuff will always make sense and will always uh, impact business value. But I think we've got to add a new thing and we're going to call it, uh, let's call it resiliency or sort of the ability to bounce back. Uh, resilience sort of is not a new word. Uh, even, for instance, City of Columbia um, has started to call their, their re-emergent uh, program for businesses Resilient Columbia. You're going to hear a lot, this word a lot. But resiliency in terms of how you bounce back, and I think that the way that you incorporate resiliency is how you incorporate your customer's behavior changes into the way that you provide goods and services. Again, that's going to be difficult to measure. I think you, that's where you're going to see it in the revenue numbers, which hopefully should generate profitability numbers. But to the extent that you can maintain a resilient business, and this is what I was alluding to that I think the chamber's doing, like things like this. Uh, in the past, I would be standing in, in a group, uh, in a room, and you had to be live and in person to hear what I'm saying and to consume this. Um, I had a client uh, sort of laugh with us about a month and a half ago to say that we had finally embraced the technology of the early aughts. And I think what they meant by that was that, you know, video conferencing technology has been with us since the early 2000s. Um, but now Zoom has become a verb. Uh, and whenever you become a verb, you've become a thing. And when you become a thing, you're part of the culture, you're part of the way that things go. Just like we Google things, we Uber places, even if we're taking Lyft. I mean, these kind of things that impact our daily lives become verbs. We are Zooming here. Uh, and so again, uh, uh, kudos to the chamber for recognizing that and putting together programs like this in a, in a very accessible way for their members uh, to benefit just the business community. So let's, let's get even deeper into this um, in terms of what, this, what I think this looks like. Um, and then I've got one more thing that I think businesses need to consider before we wrap this up. But when we talk specifically about being efficient, you know, your, your accounts payable, accounts receivable coordination, uh, working capital management, timely invoicing, kind of what we would consider to be the blocking and tackling of business. In our firm with our clients, we talk about doing the business of business, uh, sort of that mundane, nitty gritty, uh, unsung heroes within your business that make sure that these things are happening are, are still very important. When you're consistent, so again, that efficient plus consistent, where we're talking about consistent revenue generation, consistent ways to manage your cash positions, uh, consistent book and record keeping um, need to be there. And then we add in that second, that last, or sorry, the third thing, uh, resilient. How you, as the business owner, as the business leader, um, as a division leader, uh, whatever, as some leader in your, in your business, how are you going to respond to the customer's next normal? I think is what, what leads to resiliency. And so as I close, I'm gonna, I, I think there's one more thing um, that businesses need, need to do. And I think we're starting to see stories of this all over the place, which is a good thing. But I think that business owners need to sharpen their skills a little bit in trying to find the silver linings. Um, it is easy 
it is so easy to get caught up in how things are going in the, in the very present, in the very here and now. But we've been in this, these conditions for long enough where I think we've started to see where new markets have been created maybe even some new markets within, within your service area, within your, your product set, within uh, goods and services that, that, you, that you're hearing that people are asking for and there's some opportunities there. Um, new products to sell. Whoever, who, in the, who would have ever imagined that personal protective equipment, masks, gloves, and all those kind of things would be the hottest selling items of the year 2020? Who cares about that stuff? Well, now everybody cares about that stuff. It used to just be hospitals and doctor's offices and dentist offices and things like that. But now literally everyone um, is driving around in their car with one, possibly two forms of some kind of face covering, uh, gloves, all kinds of things. Um, another silver lining and more time for blank. Uh, here, a lot of our clients talk about, you know, in kind of this great slowdown, um, they've had a lot more time to do things that, that that are frankly just more meaningful uh, than, than creating business. Uh, that's a silver lining if, if I've ever heard of one. Also, I think just in general, you know, every kind of 10 to 12 years, our economy goes through one of these great resets. I think we're in that period now. I think it will be some time before we emerge from those conditions, but there's definitely a resetting uh, of the economy uh, in terms of the sectors that are gonna lead us out of this. Uh, and the sectors that frankly will need to change and adapt probably more so than some others uh, for them to remain viable uh, businesses. And that's really all the, all the um, information that I had. Uh, there's my contact information there. Uh, these slides are gonna be made available uh, through the chamber um, that you guys can, can use and, and, and distribute promiscuously, hopefully, uh, in, in order to find people that could benefit from this information. But uh, again, I wanna thank the chamber for uh, for inviting us to do this. And I think we've got some time, I hope we have some time for uh, Q and A. Hey, thanks, John. But yeah, again, for, for those that are on here, please feel free to sit, submit a question via chat. Um, I can't see everybody, so I was gonna say if you wanna raise your hand, but I, that's gonna be, uh, we, we can play that game too, if best we can. John, let's talk about what you're hearing from or what you're seeing through your clients and all Obviously, we know Zoom and, and the new verbiage, which is true. Uh, wh what other, I mean, who would have thought that, again, some restaurants are making more than they made before. You've got nurseries and, and outdoor garden centers that are tonning it right now, uh, which is great, right? But what, uh, what other trends you see? I mean, do you, have you got some clients that you were surprised that are doing extremely well? And if so, what are the, what are some of those uh, specific traits that you've been impressed by? Yeah, uh, um, I love that question. Um, you know, by and large, a lot of our clients are, are I think, more than muddling through this. Uh, some of them have had a few more bumps and scrapes that, than others. I mean, one general trend, we have a lot of clients that sort of work in uh, sort of backlogs. In other words, they know the work they'll be doing six, nine, 12 months from now on sort of a contractual basis. I think probably um, in the first quarter of this year, uh, they were enjoying some of the longest backlogs they've ever seen. Everything got basically cut in half uh, in about two months where backlogs that were 12 and 14 months long all of a sudden went to six, in some cases maybe nine months, we've seen that. Um, we've seen clients innovate. Uh, again, the, the PPE uh, product mix is something that if, if there is a way for you to offer it in your business and sort of keep a straight face, uh, you, you need to be doing that. Um, clients have, have become successful in that. Um, clients have also used this as an opportunity to, to, to work uh, on their business. Um, in, in other words, things are a little bit slower and through programs like PPE that we're helping to uh, maintain jobs, they, they've sort of retasked um, a lot of their team members to work on things in the business uh, that they've wanted to do for some time. And so that's, a, that's kind of a third trend that we're seeing. Um, I think most recently what we're seeing is that there is beginning to be a pretty strong resurgence in uh, the economy. We've got clients spread over 14 states. Uh, and so we're not really just operating in South Carolina, but from our clients in California, Colorado, Oklahoma, uh, all the way into South Carolina and other parts of the Southeast, 
a lot of them are becoming a lot more positive and that the orders are starting to come back in and things are beginning to reemerge, but uh, it doesn't feel like January, if that makes sense. All right. Remember, if y'all have a question, feel free to post it. There we've got one. Let's see. We, uh, George it says, uh, great stats on consumer confidence, et cetera. How do you think, um, how do you think the future of manufacturing index is looking? How do you think the future manufacturing index is looking? Um, you know, I'm really not sure of, about that. We have some clients that are in manufacturing and they are starting to manufacture more things. Um, I don't know that we have enough clients in manufacturing to really consider that to be an index. But I think that, that by and large, we are starting to see more and larger orders of things. We have quite a few clients that are tied to automotive. Um, especially in South Carolina. And so when Volvo came back online, when BMW came back online, um, they saw an immediate, uh, I mean, within that week, uh, sort of a resurgence in, in new orders for things. And the machine sort of, sort of got its way going again. Uh, we have another um, business uh, in California uh, that was already in, the, in healthcare uh, where they were making um, braces and things like that, like arm braces and knee braces. Um, and while their hospital orders uh, decreased significantly because um, procedures like that were not being done in, in a lot of hospitals, um, they converted uh, to an Amazon platform um, that is blowing the doors off. Uh, so they're doing the same stuff. They're selling it in a different manner. And I think that's one of the things, especially for manufacturing, that you're starting to see is that the products that are being made are necessary and needed, but the channel that they're being used to be distributed in is, is changing. And you're seeing people become very nimble uh, to, to respond to those things. Pivoting is, is important right now. And, and we've seen a bunch that have done, you know, the, the wholesalers or the, the manufacturers of alcohol switch into uh, PPE and, and, um, I mean, it's been kind of cool to watch, and those that are able to do that quickly have seemed to, to, to be in a better position. Um, any other questions that we have out there? Is anybody typing up there? Um, so as we look, I mean, I think this is an opportunity for us as a chamber to, to pivot and to look at our staff and say, hey, what, what are we doing now versus uh, what were we doing and how effective that is? I mean, it's a good time to be introspective and, and, uh, and ask those tough questions because complacency sets in on any organization and you get comfortable with one idea or one process. This throws everything up in the air. Uh, it's, a, it's a head scratcher. And as, as we see these cases increase over the last week, uh, what we thought may be a two or three month process may last a little longer as we go forward too. Yeah, resets take time. You know, it's, it's not like sort of hitting the reset button, you know, on your old uh, video game console uh, like we used to do uh, back in the day and, and then immediately, you know, sort of recycles itself and, come, and comes back on. Uh, resets do, do take time. But um, I think that, that um, if I could say this, uh, I think one of the superpowers in our country um, certainly militarily, uh, we have the strongest military uh, in, in the world. But let me, let me add this. I think that the business community, the entrepreneurial community in the United States is our superpower. The ability to pivot and to turn and to impact a, uh, I think it's a $24 trillion economy. That is a superpower and no country on the planet has that ability. Um, somehow, some way in, 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 um, in legislatures at the state and national level, we have somehow figured out how to stay out of the way and not impede that superpower that we have in this country, which is the business community. Uh, no one said it was going to be easy. No one said that, that you're going to you know, fall out of bed and make a million dollars. Uh, but this is probably one of the few places on the planet where that is possible. And, and fortunes are made in times like this. Uh, certainly fortunes are lost, and it's easy to see how that happens. Um, but, but coming up with new products and services, looking for those new markets, this is the time. The, the conditions have never been better for something like that. It's scary as hell, for sure. 
but again, that's how you kind of know that you're in, uh, in, in, that, um, in, that, in that setting. What a great upbeat way to lead this. Uh, John, thank you so much for one, uh, for your friendship, but two, taking the time to be with us today. We really appreciate your insights. Uh, John Barnes, Pendleton Street Advisors. Again, we'll have this up on the website this afternoon. For those that want to get in touch with John, uh, he'll, we'll have his contact information as well on our website. So thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. We'll be back again here shortly. So keep an eye out for more programming. Thanks a bunch. Call us if you need us. Talk to you soon. Great. Thanks.